Okay, well, welcome everyone. I think we'll get started. We've got a lot of great material to cover today, so I want to make sure we have enough time. Um, my name is Megan Spaulding, and welcome to the How to Job Search Using LinkedIn webinar today. Um, this is put on by, uh, I'm, I'm part of the Albers Placement Center, and uh, we are the career center for the business school. I have some teammates here with me, Mary Lou, Abby, and Justin are here as well, and we serve undergrad and grad business students um, on all things career related. And we're also doing this in partnership with our um, teammates over at the Career Engagement Office. Uh, they are the Career Center on campus that serves science and engineering, arts and sciences, and uh, nursing school. And um, so if you're a non-business major, they would be a great resource for you. Um, so you're all in for a treat today. We have a great presenter who is an expert on LinkedIn. Um, and he has some really useful tips for you that are especially going to be important right now um, with, you know, the way the job market is. And um, I think it's going to be really helpful for you today. Before we uh, jump in, I introduce Rick. I just wanted to go over a couple housekeeping items. Um, we're going to keep everyone muted for now just to prevent uh, distraction during Rick's presentation. Um, we're also going to hold off on taking questions just so we can make sure to get to all the content we want to. Um, and then we'll have a Q&A time at the end. So if you have a question you don't want to forget, feel free to put it into the chat um, function and we'll make sure that we get that asked. Um, and then at the end, when we do Q and A, if you do have a question, go ahead and go ahead and use the raise your hand function. That's um, if you click on manage participants, that's where you can raise your hand. And then we will unmute you so that you can ask your question to Rick or any of our teammates. Um, we are recording this webinar, so if you have to leave early or if you're, if you're coming in late, um, we will have that available. Or if you want to share it with a friend that couldn't attend today. Um, just reach out to us afterwards. We'll be happy to provide that. Um, Rick also has a supplemental uh, sheet with all his great tips on it that we want to email out after this. So if you don't have your full name listed on your Zoom account or if it's not your name that's associated with your SU account, if you could please put your email into the chat feature and um, so that we can send that uh, supplemental doc document to you, that would be great. All right, without further ado, let me introduce our wonderful presenter today. Um, I've got a bio here to read. So um, our presenter for our webinar is Rick Sass. Rick is a skilled career coach and management consultant with vast experience in all aspects of career management media operations, relationship sales, and executive development. Currently, he's a career coach and LinkedIn subject matter expert with Lee Hecht Harrison, which is in Bellevue, Washington. Prior to career coaching, Rick was employer relations manager at Seattle Pacific University and a career consultant with Career Horizons in Bellevue. An executive with nearly 30 years experience in the media industry, Rick was Director of Customer Marketing and Sales for the Puget Sound Business Journal and previously held executive roles for more than 20 years with USA Today. Um, he's, an, he's active in the community and in part of many professional organizations. He served leadership positions on the boards of the Executive Network of Seattle, um, which is the acronym, acronym is TENS and the American Cancer Society's Hope Gala. He's a 14-year mentor in our Albers Mentor Program, and I know a couple of you on here today are his current mentees. You're very fortunate. Um, he's, a act, he's, active in our business plan and he, he's active in the Business Plan and Mentor Programs at UW Foster School of Business, Seattle U, SPU, and UW Bothell. Rick has a bachelor's degree in finance from University of Notre Dame and an MBA from the University of Kansas. So you are in great hands, <laughs> lots of wealth of networking and expertise and advice to give you today. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Rick. Rick, thanks for being here. Well, thanks, Megan. That sounds way more impressive than I believe it actually is, but hey, I'll take it. So, 
Thank you everyone for coming. I'm really happy that I could be here with you all today. I will tell you that we've got a lot to cover. Um, I like to refer to myself as being a LinkedIn nerd, uh, even with my executive clients. So um, that is because primarily I've got about four or five hours of LinkedIn content that I use when I teach classes on LinkedIn. So we're gonna try and cram all of that into about 45 minutes here and that'll be a lot of fun. So without any further ado, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, share my screen so we create it into LinkedIn, if that works for everybody. <clears throat> All right. So um, LinkedIn uh, obviously is, is kind of the place to be these days, not for helping you to find jobs, but also it becomes kind of your online brand. And so what I wanna to touch base on a little bit, I'm gonna break this up into three segments. The first of which is we're gonna talk about the profile. What should you have on your profile? What's important about that profile? Um, how should you put it together? What should you make sure you have and don't have? <clears throat> then we're gonna jump into specifics to job search using LinkedIn because in addition to it being kind of your resume on steroids, so to speak, it really is the place to find people and to be found by companies. So we're gonna do some searches out there. We're gonna show you how to access people, how to access companies and follow companies, how to join groups and some of those sorts of things. And then we'll spend uh, the last part of it talking specifically about connections, how to build your connections, who to connect with, and so on and so forth. So a lot of areas to touch on. As Megan indicated, if you have questions as we go along, go ahead and put them in the chat. And then I will open it up, uh, hopefully in the last 15 minutes or so to pick up questions that you may have picked up along the way. So as I indicated, uh, LinkedIn is kind of one of the big uh, players in terms of social media, obviously not the size of Facebook, but Facebook is not nearly the professional organization and professional platform that LinkedIn is. Currently, uh, uh, Facebook has about, any, depending on who you're paying attention to, anywhere between 2.4 2.6 billion users on Facebook, which makes it kind of the big kahuna out there. Uh, although um, I guess Instagram also has over a billion users, interestingly enough, only about 100 million of those are in the United States, only about 10%. Uh, by contrast, LinkedIn relatively small with 660 million profiles uh, and about 30% about of those are in the United States. So that said, there are nearly 200 million LinkedIn profiles in the United States, which makes it actually twice, almost twice as large as Instagram in the United States. For that reason, we know that anybody serious about finding people or finding jobs is spending a lot of time on LinkedIn. And it becomes your online brand. It's your online presence out there. And that's what makes, what makes it so critical. A couple things I want to touch on as we start off here, because we do know that more than 90% of potential employers will see you for the first time on social media. They will do a Google or a Bing search. Invariably, they're going to end up on LinkedIn. And most of them, I will tell you, well over 90% of them actually start off with LinkedIn. The recruiters and headhunters tell us that they spend about 95% of their time on LinkedIn. So it really becomes the go-to place and something critically important in terms of making sure that you have your brand represented out there. One of the things you always wanna make sure that you do is to personalize your LinkedIn profile as much as you possibly can. And what you really wanna start off with because it's part of your resume too, is you wanna make sure you have a personalized URL. What I wanna point out to you here is I'm gonna go up to the Me tab and I wanna do a couple of things here. When that Me tab opens up, if those of you are not familiar with it, you always wanna make sure if you're gonna be making changes to your LinkedIn profile, that you turn off your broadcast first. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go down to the settings and privacy tab down here, click on that, and you're gonna see you know, how many connections I've got and when I got on LinkedIn and so forth. But what you really wanna do, and by the way, notice there are four different tabs here ads, communications, privacy, and account tab, you wanna go down to where it says, how others see your LinkedIn activity in big letters. And the fourth option down says, share job changes, education changes, and work anniversaries from profile. And unlike mine, which is set to yes, you always wanna make sure that if you're gonna be making a bunch of changes to your profile, 
that you toggle that to no. That way you are not going to be spamming your connections if you go making changes on your LinkedIn profile. Next thing I wanna do though, for those of you that don't have a personalized LinkedIn URL, which is in essence your address on the internet, I'm gonna go up to the edit public profile right at the very top of the privacy tab and click on that. And when you do, you're going to see basically what somebody doing a Google or a Bing search of your name would see uh, if they did that Google or Bing search, what you see on the left two thirds of the page is what they will see. Where I wanna go here is right up here in the top. I basically wanna hit edit your custom URL and you can see here URL is www.linkedin.com front slash in front slash Rick Sass. For those of you who do not have a personalized URL after your name, and it may be hyphenated, it might say Rick hyphen Sass hyphen a bunch of gibberish, letters and numbers. You basically want to go in using that little edit pencil and go to get rid of the gibberish after your name, try saving it. If in fact that is already taken by somebody else, you can always put in a middle initial, a middle name, or you could put in, you know, I could put in Rick Sass MBA or something like that. So something that describes you and is going to be part of your brand because this URL should be on your resume. If you have business cards, which you all should have eventually, they should be on your business cards. Uh, I even put mine on the signature line on my, uh, on my uh, email signature because I wanna drive traffic, traffic to my LinkedIn profile. All right, uh, by the way, just as an FYI, down below you see some basic other settings, including your visibility, which should always be turned on. The basic requirements of name, number of connections and so forth are all there as well. I recommend that, especially when you're looking for a job, make your profile photo, which we'll talk about in a minute, visible to the public. And then all of these little toggle switches below refer to all the different elements of your LinkedIn profile. They should all by default be set to show. Unless you're worried about details of experience or education, I again would recommend that you have it set to show. For those of you who may be doing this, this along with me, I'm now gonna go up to the little copy of my headshot in the upper right corner. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna go back to view my LinkedIn profile, all right? Okay, when we land on your LinkedIn profile, a couple things that happen here. Notice that I've got some visuals. I've got a background shot, I've got a headshot. This becomes important because we know that more than 40% of the general population are visual processors meaning that in essence, they live life based on what comes in through their eyes. For that reason, the visuals on your LinkedIn profile matter. As a matter of fact, those 40%, when they land on your LinkedIn profile, uh, they are going to be making decisions and determinations about who you are, both personally and professionally, based on what they see in the visuals before they ever read a word on your LinkedIn profile. Now, we also know that the headshot becomes really important because people are 22 times more likely to actually look at your LinkedIn profile and read it if they can see your hat. So make sure that you've got a professional looking headshot there. By the way, perfectly fine to take it with your, with your iPhone or whatever. Just make sure it is a professional looking shot. And as with mine, it is shoulders and above. Shoulders and above only, make sure you're smiling. Why? Because we all like to do business and work with people that are upbeat, happy, good-natured, friendly, approachable. So make sure that you are smiling in that headshot and make sure it's a fairly recent picture so that people will recognize you if they see you. Beyond that, you've got a background shot. Now where I'm going to go over here is next to where it says add profile section and more. You see there's a little edit pencil there. I'm going to click on that edit pencil. It opens up the edit intro box which is where you would upload. For those of you who don't have a headshot, that's where you upload it. For those of you who do, you can play around with it there by again, clicking on the little edit pencil. It allows you to zoom, to crop, all kinds of things, loading and unloading additional pictures. Um, and then the same thing goes with your background photo. The background photo, if you see me hovering up here, 1584 by 396 pixels, lots of pixels. The more pixels, the sharper and crisper the image is gonna be. The only other thing that becomes really critical in here is your headline. 
the headline on LinkedIn by default will be whatever your current position is at your current company. Now, because all of you are students, many of you are working, you can put something about your work up there, but most of you are not currently working. What you want to put into this headline are keywords that are going to help people know and understand who you are, what you do, and what you're good at. Okay. Now, I want to shift here for a second. So, uh, Megan, if you would tell me, do you see Nick Mozzie here? You can just give me a thumbs up if that works because I can see you. Yeah, I can see it, Rick. Okay, Nick Mozzie is a former Gonzaga student who lives across the street from me right now. He's back home with his parents because everybody's running away from the virus. Uh, great background shot. Now, I, I met with Nick. I spent about an hour with Nick just telling him what to do on his LinkedIn profile. He did the rest, okay? So he probably got basically what you guys are getting here. He did that background shot. You can see he's a planner. He's an engineer. He's a BS in civil engineering. And this is what I want to see. You're a student. Tell me you're a student. Tell me what you're studying. Now, mind you, he also put in there outdoor enthusiast, which I know he is. Transportation and stormwater management, which is what he is doing now that he has landed a job. And model making and design, which again are skills that he uses in what it is that he does. Before he landed his current job, he did have just BS in engineering. He had that he was a, a graduating student from Gonzaga and so forth. Um, all of that becomes important in terms of keywords though, that the, when people come looking for you on LinkedIn, the keywords that show up in this headline area become the most critical to make sure that those recruiters and headhunters are going to be able to find you, okay? So I'm gonna pop back over to my profile here. You've got 120 characters of space to play with there, and that is why my LinkedIn headline says what it says. I'm actually taking advantage of 119 of the 120 characters just so I can demonstrate to you how much space you've got to play with. You don't have to go into great detail the way I did, but you do wanna put in keywords that you think people are gonna to use to find you. So my title at Lee Hecht Harrison is I'm a career associate, and yes, I'm a LinkedIn SME, which I do have the LinkedIn up there, but I also have career coach, which is what I actually do. I've got job search strategies because somebody might be interested in help with job search. I've got LinkedIn in there twice. I've got career management in there. All of those are nouns that describe what I do and help hopefully help people to find me when they're looking for somebody like myself, okay? All right, I'm gonna pop out, out of the, uh, there are other things in there which uh, for the most part aren't that critical to you uh, other than the zip code is what decides what city. Notice that you can decide between the specific small town, which is Sammamish in my case, um, or greater Seattle area. And you do have to select an industry. And so there is none for student, by the way, as you can see. You do have to go with one of the pre-populated um, industries there. So find one that looks like it's going to be what you're going to go into and select that. The good news is that recruiters and headhunters especially don't tend to worry too much and they can select more than one industry or no industry when they go doing their searches, okay? All right, I'm gonna pop out of there in the interest of time. The one other thing I wanna focus on up here at the top of your profile is you should all see here it says, get show recruiters that you're open to job opportunities. When, for those of you who are seniors or grad students gonna be graduating here shortly, you should all have that toggled to say yes, get started. And I am gonna come back to talk about this a little bit more, but I did wanna make mention of it right now, okay? You also have the opportunity when you go in there, by the way, to let everybody on LinkedIn know that you're open to opportunities too. Um, I do think that's a good option for students. I don't generally recommend it for my clients that are professionals, but for students, by all means, and do what you're comfortable with up there. All right, I'm gonna go down very quickly to the about section because this becomes the second most important piece of real estate for keywords. And what you wanna do here, um, if I go back over to Nick Mozzie for a second, if we look at his about, you can see really he hasn't changed this since he did graduate. He said, I'm a recent graduate from civil engineering program at GU looking to advance my career. He makes it first person, very approachable. He followed one of what I call the SAS rules and that is make sure you never go more than a sentence or two 
and always, you know, never more than three to four lines without putting in white space. And he did that very effectively. Notice he also used bullets, uh, very similar to what I do on mine. Uh, bullets are a great way to call people's attention and their eyes to those specific areas. What you want to do in this summary is tell a little of your story. Tell us what, why we as potential hiring managers and recruiters are going to be interested in you and what you do and what you bring and what you want to do next. So much like Nick did, I, I'd love to see you tell me why are you studying right now? What are you studying that you hope to be able to take and apply to what you want to do next? If you do have experience, tell us about that too. So, you know, he talks about down here, customer service experience. I enjoy interacting with clients and working to find the best solutions to fit their needs. He also talks about teams. I'm team and community focused. I enjoy working and engaging with others in a team of community environments. So, you know, really kind of tell us a little bit of your story in that summary area, now called the about in LinkedIn, you've got 2,500 characters, which is roughly four to 500 words, which is a lot of space. You don't have to use it all up. And by the way, not even, even I am not using all of that space, but make sure that you do put in a lot of keywords that you think recruiters or headhunters might use in trying to find somebody with your skill set. All right. All right. Very quickly, I want to drop down into the experience section down here because you do want to put any professional experience you've got. We're going to get down to your education here a little bit later, but any professional experience you've got, and I don't care if it's nannying, working at a store, if you've done volunteer work that is close to professional, that is in the, especially if it's related to what you want to do for, for a chosen field, tell us that too. And what's most important in here is tell me what you do that is skill oriented. So again, if I go back over to Nick for a second, because we can see what he did uh, as when he was working uh, for a, a Klahani service center, you can see he you know, worked on cars, he talked about some of what he did, but he talks about you know, basic repairs, responsible for training. So there's a skill. I was training new employees in the shop with techniques and so forth. Uh, customer interaction. He's putting in skills in there that he expects are going to be important to what it is that he wants to do next. So uh, something that you probably could work with the Career Center on, work with the, the folks in Albers to try and help you out with this, or uh, any of your you know, professors that you might want to help you out with that. I would always go look at their LinkedIn profiles first to see what theirs looks like, but uh, I would want to make sure and get any kind of help I could from any sources. And I know you've got a lot available at Seattle U, so do take advantage of all of that. Notice, by the way, that I've got my Albers mentorship up here as a professional role because it does demonstrate that what I do and what I've done very happily for 14 years is mentoring students in the full Jesuit Ignatian tradition. And I even have a, an attachment there which refers to the mentor program, which I won't click on right at the moment. So any experience that hopefully has got relevant skills and abilities, and what I really want you to do here is focus on a simple formula. Think about things that you did, much as you do for your resume. Think about what you did in terms of an action and what the impact of that was. Try to emphasize your skills. So for example, if I was nannying for a family, one of the things I had to do was make sure that the children that I was responsible for were fed, were taken care of, were safe. I had to probably organize some activities. Maybe I had to help one of the, one of the or more of the children with their studies. So I had to do a lot of things involving communication organizational skills. I had to do things that were uh, involved in safety and security. So all of these skills that may be relevant to what I want to do in my career should be important and should be mentioned and highlighted as early as possible. And if you can do it in a way of just basically saying, here's what I did and here's what the impact of that was. Okay, none of the kids got run over by a car. I mean, that's a little facetious, obviously, but making sure that you're demonstrating that the kids were 
uh, were excited to see you coming, that they enjoyed their time with you, the parents felt safe and secure that you were able to take care of their children, that you helped them with their learning, you kept them out of trouble, you helped them to be able to work together uh, in collaboration. All of these skills are skills that could be relevant to what you want to be doing next, all right? Okay, next thing I want to bounce down to very quickly here, because all of you got your education, put your education in there. If you haven't graduated yet, put the anticipated date and you know, make sure that you put down what you're studying. Um, you can have media as I do. You, you all wanna put your dates down here on, on uh, LinkedIn. And by the way, just to, to show you, to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go in. Uh, you'll notice that I've got year there, but the years, you can put your start year as recently as this current year and your end year, if I'm not gonna graduate till 2024 or 25, I can put those dates all the way up to 2027. In my case, I'm old, I'm hiding the fact that I'm old so I don't put dates on mine. If you do have any activities or societies, put them down. If you have any honors, if you want any, uh, any uh, uh, scholarships or anything of that nature, put those things down here because they matter. Notice on what I put, you know, even from a million years back, uh, you know, my graduate level journalism and uh, copy editing and so forth. So all of that becomes important and you want to that you, you have all of that information down because your education right now is front and, and center in terms of critical skills. Really quickly, skills and endorsements. You want to get skills down here so that people can endorse you. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can have up to 50 skills. Notice that mine, unlike many of yours, are out of order. I've got 93 for coaching, but only 38 for LinkedIn and 66 for career counseling. You can rearrange these very easily by just going into the edit box and you'll see edit pencils, which are, I mean, a little uh, uh, blue uh, push pins here that allow you to move skills around. If I wanted to drop LinkedIn down below to bring one of the other ones up, I would just click on the push pin it would drop it down into a category box down below, which would allow me to move one up from down below. You can also rearrange them by left clicking on the little lines to the right over there and then moving them around and then saving them. So that becomes important. Um, add skills that are relevant. Uh, I, a lot of times I see students that are, are adding skills uh, that are, you know, things like uh, Excel or Word or something. If that's all you've got, well, go for it. But I would love to see collaboration, communication, uh, you know, skills that you're going to use in your next role, provided that obviously, hopefully, you've, you've utilized and demonstrated. Maybe it's leadership. Uh, you know, look for the skills that those recruiters are going to look for. And a place to look for those skills, by the way, is look at job descriptions. What skills are they looking for in those job descriptions? Okay. All right. Very quickly here, too. Um, any organizations, honors and awards, uh, you know, ideally college honors and awards, you probably could put high school in there, too. Um, anything of that nature, uh, put by all means. All right. Um, interest of time here, I want to bounce ahead and do a little bit of search stuff here, okay, because I know this is critical to all of you. So first and foremost, I do want to go to that recruiter area. And one other way, way you can do that, by the way, is the jobs tab up at the top, okay? So you could go to it through there. I'm going to click on it from here where it says get started. And you can see I've populated this with five job titles that I'm interested in. You can only have five job titles and you have to go with the job titles that they have. So if you start typing in something that's related to management, it's gonna say, oh, this management, that management, you cannot make up a title of your own. You have to go with the pre-populated titles. You can only have five of these, okay? So pick them judiciously. Likewise, you can have five locations. You'll notice that in addition to the greater Seattle area, I put, yes, Sammamish where I live, I put Seattle, I put Redmond and Bellevue. Again, you can only have five and you can only go with the ones that they pre-populated, all right? Uh, job types, you notice I've got full-time and contract. I also have remote. For those of you who may be looking for volunteer work or you may want to do, you know, uh, internship, you can designate those now, but make sure you do have for those full-time roles, you've got that designated as well. Um, and then down at the bottom of the profile, which 
I'm gonna have to move some things around here. You see that it says only recruiters. You also have the option to say all LinkedIn members, which is what I mentioned before. And then once you've done that, you would click add to the profile. In this case, I'm not gonna do that because I'm not looking for a job. Now, once you have done that, you've kind of raised your hand to those recruiters and headhunters and hiring managers saying, I'm looking, all right? Now, that's not enough because what you really wanna be doing is pulling together a target company list, looking for jobs, and going to search to find out who do you know that can introduce you or get you into companies like that. But you also want to look for specific companies to set up job alerts on LinkedIn, okay? I'm gonna to go to Microsoft. It's a nice, easy one that a lot of you are probably interested in anyway. When I land on Microsoft's page, a bunch of things happen here. You can see right over here it says, I'm following Microsoft. If you're not following Microsoft underneath the, underneath the Microsoft logo, it should say follow. And you can just click follow and now you're following Microsoft. Make sure you are following every company you have any interest in working for. For one thing, it will give you information. Anything they post on their company page, which is what this is, I would then get notified, hey, Microsoft posted something on their company page. Great. That includes job postings, by the way. So if I'm interested in no job postings, that's one way to find out. Now, in addition to that, it demonstrates to those headhunters, recruiters, and hiring managers that you're interested in Microsoft because you're following Microsoft. And I'm gonna tell you, follow every company on your target company list, any company you have any interest in working for at all. Um, one of the reasons it really becomes critical, by the way, is that uh, I discovered a number of years ago that when recruiters go doing their searches, a lot of times they get more results than what they were anticipating or looking for, especially for early stage or entry level jobs, such as what many of you might be looking for. In the event that that happens, they frequently will hit a little check mark box that says, is this person following my company? If you're not following their company and they check mark that box, guess what? You just took yourself out of their search without even knowing you were ever in it. So make sure you're following every company of any interest in working for, and ideally their competitors too. Now notice down here it says recommended jobs for me. That's because I've come in here before and looked for jobs. What you want to do first and foremost is go look at the jobs tab over here on the left side. So I'm gonna click on jobs and it'll say based on my profile and those preferences that I put in the jobs box, it's going to suggest some jobs for me, okay? So that's one of the reasons you wanna do that. If I were to go up here into this box where it says Microsoft has 3,916 job openings, find the one for you, I could put in a title there and do a search, and it would allow me then to set up a job alert on LinkedIn, which means they're gonna funnel any jobs that have that job title my way and let me know about them. But what it also means is it raises your hand high and mighty to the recruiters at Microsoft, especially the ones hiring for that job, saying Rick is looking for this job. So it becomes really critical that you put in those job alerts. Now, once you've done that, and with any job you're really interested in, go to the company page and click on people. Now, what you see happens here is really important, okay? Now, there's two things you can do. Number one is I can do this search, which I'm gonna do for you here in a second. But what I really wanna do for you is I wanna look to see who am I connected to? So I can see, you know, there's, there's 10 million people following Microsoft, 178,000 employees rather. I can click on that, I'm doing a search now, and you'll see I'm in the advanced search page, people, current companies, and so forth. One of the things that I can do here, because 179,000 results is too much, I can go and say connections. In this case, I'm only gonna designate second level connections because in that case, I can reach out through somebody else to connect with you, or with, with, the, with the person that I wanna connect with in, in Microsoft. And this becomes particularly important to most of you because I'm guessing a lot of you maybe don't have first degree connections, although you would reach out to those people first, but you do probably have second degree connections. And what I can do now is I can look and say, oh, I'm connected to Jerry Tony Morrison through John Baker and through Aaron Knight and two other shared connections. 
So what I could do is I could go to connect and just mention, hey, I see you're connected to John Baker. I'm connected too. I see you're here in Seattle. You're at Microsoft. I'm doing some research on Microsoft. And so I could click connect. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to personalize the message, which was, is what you should always do if you're reaching out to somebody that you don't know. You've got, as you can see right here, you've got 300 characters of space to play with, which is not a lot. So you're not writing a cover letter. You're writing maybe two to three sentences that really should say, here's why I'm reaching out to connect with you and why it's important to me is I'd really like to talk with you because I'm doing some research on Microsoft. You're not gonna say, hey, you're, you're my ticket to my next job. That's a little too upfront to somebody you don't know, okay? So yeah, try to reach out, personalize the message. If you do have first degree connections, obviously you would go to the first degree connections. But the other thing I can do with this search now is I could further the search by saying, I'm looking for somebody who is a project manager, or I could say I'm looking for a recruiter, maybe technical recruiter. Okay, so I can put technical recruiter up in the top box up there to further refine my search. And now it's going to take it down to 1300. I can furthermore put down a location, greater Seattle area. It's going to narrow that search a little bit more. And again, I've still got, you know, like 500 people, but Again, some of these people are, sec or most of these are second degree connections, and I can reach out through my connections to try to get to those people, okay? All right, next thing I wanna do here is I wanna go back to the page to show you the other thing you can do, which is really kind of cool too. And that is, you can see it mentions where they live, where they, where they studied in terms of their degrees. Next page, if I go over, it says what they do and what they studied, okay? And then I could go to the next page and even shows me how they're connected to me, what they're skilled at, um, and, and I could put all of these into the search I do. So in this case, I might say, oh, yep, I want to look at Seattle. So I'm going to do a Seattle search, and I'm going to go down and say, okay, there's still 61,000. That's way too big. I can say, okay, I want to look for Notre Dame because I studied at Notre Dame. So I'm going to go in and say University of Notre Dame and add that to my search. And now it's gonna, well, it didn't give me what I was looking for. So I probably needed to do the search a little bit differently here. But in, in eventually what I'm gonna do is narrow the search down. Let's see if what I'm getting down below here, you see shared connections. And basically the bottom line is these people are gonna be down here. And if in fact they did go to Notre Dame, uh, which I'm pretty sure that this person did, um, I could reach out to them the same way I did with that other search. I could go to that person's profile and, and do connect. Now, if any of you are premium users of LinkedIn, and I don't necessarily recommend that students be premium users, but one of the things premium use does allow you to do is to use uh, a basically a free reach out to that person without having to ask them to connect, okay? So all of this becomes important in terms of you finding people at companies because ultimately what gets you jobs these days is your network, the people you know. Leverage and utilize that network as much as possible and use LinkedIn as a tool to help you to be able to do that, all right? Okay, um, next thing I wanna show you while we're doing a search like this, uh, just because it is one of the cool things about search on LinkedIn is um, you should always be joining groups. I mentioned following companies. You should join groups as well. And I know whenever I come to Seattle U, one of the things that always come, I wanna do a search for Seattle up here in the search box. And quite honestly, you can see I already did one. So I'm gonna go out here and click on Seattle University. This is the Alumni Association. And what it is here, and I should basically walk you through it just to show you, but I, when I go to Seattle University in my search up here, notice that it says people, jobs, and Seattle University School. I'm gonna click on Seattle University School here, and it shows me the, the university page, okay? Now, what all of you can do is you can go down and look at the alumni, and what this is gonna do now is much like what I did with the Microsoft people, you can see it's got 52,965 alumni. 
Well, in this case, again, I want to narrow that to Seattle. And um, I'm going to do that search to take it down from 53,000 to, well, it doesn't seem to be working right for me here. So let me do a show more here and see if I can find Seattle because I should be able to click on it. There it is right here. So 33,948. Now maybe I'm interested in, again, Microsoft. Click on that. Now it's taken me down to 744. Okay. Now I can go next door as I did before and say what they do. Okay, I'm interested in finance or marketing maybe or sales, okay? So I can click on marketing. I can go click on sales as well if I want. And I can again search more based on specific skills or what they studied. Maybe I'm only interested in the people that had studied marketing or business or whatever it may be. And now I've gotten it down to 24 alumni in my search. And down below here, once again, you can see here they are. So I could go to any of these people, click on their profile, don't click connect from there. And I could click connect here, could basically reach out to somebody I know is a Seattle U alum who is working at a company that I'm interested in joining, working at Microsoft in this particular case. Okay, so all of this becomes important in terms of doing searches to try to find links and connections to help open doors for you, okay? Now, I did go over to the Seattle University Alumni Group. I'm gonna to go to that again. And by the way, I could have just done that Seattle University search again, by the way, and just typed in Seattle University. And while you noticed before, it showed me Seattle University in terms of the school and jobs and people, I'm not interested in those. Down below it showed the group, but even if it didn't, I could just click on that little magnifying glass and now it would take me to this page where I could change that, that more tab and go to groups. And now it's gonna show me all of the Seattle, now mind you, it's got Seattle Pacific in there too, but um, Seattle University groups, and if I had put it in quotation marks, it would find it more easily. But here's the Seattle uh, U alumni group and I can click on that and this is where you guys can all request to join, and Megan, I'm sure, will alert you as to when you can join based on uh, your status in terms of uh, alumni or, or being close to graduating. I know they let you in before you graduate, right, Megan? Yeah, Rick, um, I think grad students can join any time, and then I think see, when, when uh, students are seniors. Okay. Um, there's also, a, uh, if students are business students, there's also a specific Albers um, school group and then I'm sure it's that case if people are in other colleges um, there's also I think it's um, students and alumni of Albers Seattle University Albers School of Business there's the bridge group so you, <laughs> there's a lot of groups there's, there's my students out there <laughs> Is this the one you were looking for, Megan? No, it's a little bit bigger. I think it starts out with students and alumni of Albers. Okay. People wow. have kind of started their own things, I think, so. Yeah, absolutely. Joining multiple is probably not a bad thing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I think I am a member of about three or four Notre Dame groups. Yeah. Maybe they changed the name. That might be it. I'm not sure. I haven't okay. looked at it in a while, but... So again, yeah. I could even just I could even just do an Albers search and see all the ones yeah. that show up there. Mm -hmm. So four results here. These all look pretty small. Yeah. So, um, but we students can reach out to us and we're happy to help them find it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, next thing I want to touch on is in terms of connections because I want to hit this really quickly and I want to open it up for questions. Question always comes up, who should I connect with? Should I connect with everyone? How should I go about doing it? So one of the things I always recommend, by the way, is as soon as you connect with somebody, and I can see all of you who are reaching out to connect with me. By the way, I do not connect with everyone. So just a word of warning. Um, I connect with people in essence that I have spent time with, and so I appreciate all the well wishes and nice things, but I have to have an hour one-on-one -on -one FaceTime in order to connect with you. So here's the thing, I'm gonna to go to my connections here really quickly. And um, 
I, I don't know if Michelle's on the call, so I won't pick on her. But what I always read is as soon as you connect with somebody. So I connected with George Mahoney, who's one of my colleagues. Shame on him, he doesn't have a background shot. But as soon as you connect with anyone, and he's not a good example because I can't see his connections. Notice up here on top, I can see the number of connections he's got, but I can't see who they are. I can see his contact information, which all of this stuff, including his email, because we're first degree connections. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna to go to my friend, Matt Youngquist, who is a friend of Seattle U as well. And you'll notice that his connections are in blue, which means if I click on those, I can see his connections. That means that, oh, Anna Leota, who I know Anna Leota, I used to work a little bit with her when I was at the Business Journal. And that's what I recommend is as soon as you connect with somebody, go and harvest the people that you know. Who do I know that that person knows? I can go to Anna Leota, and now I'm gonna go click connect on her profile, and I'm gonna personalize the message using that 300 characters. Now, who should you connect with? You should connect with your classmates, you should connect with your professors, you should connect with people in the business school, people that you know at Seattle U, people that you know from high school, people that you know from the neighborhood, friends of your parents, um, anybody that basically is uh, in your network and could conceivably help you out, hopefully anybody here in the Seattle area. But what I'm gonna suggest is this, connect with people that you know, number one, people in your industry or desired industry as much as possible, connect with people that you know are connectors. By that I mean people that do a lot of networking. Um, if you are in the mentor program, which I hope many of you, if not all of you are, obviously connect with your mentor. Um, ask them who you should be connecting with as well. Uh, the bottom line is go for quality over quantity, but my rule of thumb is 10 connections for each year of your age. So I love to see my college grads having more than 200 connections by the time they graduate. Now, that doesn't always happen. I just worked with a C-level person back in New York in the last week or two uh, who didn't even have a LinkedIn profile. Obviously, he's not gonna have 200. Yeah, I know, I'm shocked too, Megan. Uh, this was a C-level guy and a very smart guy. And uh, we worked and built his, his profile up. But the bottom line was he was gonna have to work, work, work to get connections. So always, you know, add connections, set a goal for yourself. You know, if it's professors, classmates, and by the way, with those classmates, you never know who they become. Case in point, there's a guy that I went to school with many years ago at Notre Dame, uh, uh, who just by happens, not Michael Dell, and not Michael Sass, my son. Oh my gosh, Michael Dell changed his background profile picture. I'm gonna have to make a note of that. I used to use that as a good example. Uh, you'll notice that I have two connections, mutual connections. And so Michael Massetti, this guy right here, he used to work for Michael Dell. He also used to live across the hall from me when I was at Notre Dame. So, you know, more than 30 years ago, you never know what comes back to help you out. So, you know, go look for people that are influencers. This guy's got 6,000 followers. Many of, most of those are connections. I'm not suggesting that you all go do that. Uh, but you do want to add connections because the connections help the recruiters to get close to you as well. Here's the way, here's the way search works on LinkedIn. There is those keywords that I mentioned, the location of the keywords I mentioned, headlines, summary, then your job titles and your experience and projects that you've worked on and your recommendations. All that becomes important. Then there is geography factors into it. And then finally is this relative proximity to the person doing the search, meaning the closer you are to the person doing the search, the higher up you're going to come in the search that they do if they're looking for the keywords that you have on your profile that are related to the job. So I always wanna make sure keywords, keywords, add connections, focus on those people that can help you out. Uh, but, but ideally, uh, try to get as close as you can to a particular job. So if I know I'm looking for a particular company, go to that company. If I have a second degree connection, get somebody that is a, is a first degree connection to me to introduce me to somebody inside that company. And I don't care if that person is the janitor or an admin or a C-level person. 
get them to introduce me so I can have a brief, brief conversation and try to connect on LinkedIn because that'll get me closer to those recruiters. Okay, I've done a lot of talking. I'm sure there's tons of stuff I haven't mentioned, including the latest and greatest fun find that I showed Megan the other day um, is the use of hashtags on LinkedIn. I really quickly want to go out to uh, a guy by the name of Pascal Borne, who is a former Lehigh Terrace and client, not one of mine. Very neat looking background shot up there, neat looking headline up there, um, 500 plus connections. Notice the first line of his about section. I am passionate about improving our world with hashtag artificial intelligence, hashtag automation, and hashtag analytics. And if I were to go and just you know put in hashtag automation up here, you will see it's going to pop up and say, uh, look at any of these different areas. But I'm going to go look at hashtag automation as he did. And there are 104,000, almost 105,000 automation followers, which I can follow just by doing that too. And that becomes important if that's important to what I want to be doing. So um, I'm not totally sold on the hashtags yet, but I think they are a big, big help. Uh, and that's the last thing I'm going to say for the time being. I'm going to turn it over to Megan Open for questions. Wow, Rick, you are, gosh, you covered a lot. That was so great. <laughs> Thank you. I talk fast. Um, so if, uh, if you have a question, if you want to click on the manage participants, and then you should be able to raise your hand, um, they'll be happy to unmute you, and you can ask your question to Rick. Um, I also want to mention on the hashtag, there is a um, hashtag get hired right now on LinkedIn. And so um, if you type that in, there's just a ton of um, material that's helpful from a job search perspective, um, articles, <clears throat> people posting resources, things like that. Excellent point. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it. And by the way, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Uh, by the way, you know, all of this stuff may be nice, uh, but that stuff should all be on your on your LinkedIn profile. You don't have to put a resume out there. As you can see, it doesn't look really clear. It looks kind of fuzzy. Mm -hmm. I'm just not a fan of doing that. But I, I agree with Megan. The hashtag Get Hired is a great spot to go find great articles. Um, and and always go here. By the way, Un notice underneath where it says Start a Post. Click where it says top there and click on recent and it'll show you the most recent stuff as opposed to what's trending as the most active out here. I think Cecilia must have paid somebody to post her resume. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rick, will you do me a favor and go to your homepage and also show yeah. the thing we were looking at the other day, the news, no, the main home. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. yeah okay. Yep. Yep. And over okay. on the right, that's, you know, coronavirus, all those oh, yeah, news yeah. articles and helpful things on the right-hand side. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. And thank you for reminding me of that, Megan. <clears throat> Who, here's who's hiring right now. Uh, you know, United to Cut Management, all these different stories. And, you know, the nice thing about this, and this is something I used to do too, was um, I love this kind of stuff. And as you can see, you can share that. So if I wanted to share this, this is a way you can promote your brand, by the way. If I want to share this, I can click share. And it's going to say on LinkedIn, okay, or I could share it on Twitter or Facebook too. But if I want to share it in a post, I can share it in a post on the main page. I can share it within groups too. And that becomes really, really important. So yeah, Megan, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> it's great. And as you can see too, anything in blue, you see there's more to behind it. So any other questions out there, or did I just totally bamboozle everybody and put them in shock? <laughs> no, you're great. Rick, I know one thing people, students struggle with, they mentioned to me is, um, you, once you've found that person on LinkedIn and you wanna reach out to them, what do you say? Like, how do you, what are you asking for so that you're not too pushy or aggressive or that you actually get a response? Great, great question, Megan. What you really want to do is this, because you don't have much space, uh, it, you know, number one, play the student card. Absolutely play the student card, and especially you seniors or graduating grad students, because 
you know, you're, you're getting dumped into a bad situation out there, a tough economic environment, all that. So, you know, now's the time to reach out and play the student card while you're still a student. What you want to say is simply, as Megan indicated, something simple, not, hey, you're going to find me my next job or, hey, I, you know, just say something like, I, you know, I see you're here in Seattle, you're working at Microsoft in project management. Um, I'm, a, I'm a student at Seattle U. I'm going to be graduating here virtually in the next couple of months. Would love a chance to just chat with you a little bit about Microsoft and project management. Plain and simple and give them some contact information or let them reach back to you. If you're not a premium user of LinkedIn, the only way you can do that is by asking them to connect. And if they're like me and only connect with people that they've had an hour one-on-one -on -one time with, Hopefully they'll they'll respond back to you. Though I'm a little bit worried that um, I I tried to do that yesterday with somebody, and luckily I shared a group with that person, which meant I could go into the group page and send them a message. Because um, I have found this morning that in, in so doing, sending a message on LinkedIn is becoming more difficult, and I hope that's not something down the road that's going to be a problem. So you know, make it make it tell them why it matters to you, why it's important. Uh, in short form, and you don't even have to mention anything about a job, just say you're, you know, you're graduating recently or you're a student, would love to chat with them briefly. Uh, you know, when you have the opportunity, you can do a Zoom meeting or, you know, whatever. Okay. Perfect. Other one other real quick thing, Rick, I remembered. Um, what is the, the one benefit to maybe doing the trial on premium or investing okay. in it right now is the LinkedIn learning? Yeah, so yeah, LinkedIn learning, and that's a great point, Megan, is that um, it, it's a little bit pricey for most students because the cheapest you can do uh, for premium on LinkedIn is $30 a month. Um, I'm gonna go up here to the, to the uh, well, actually, I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna go over to the premium, try premium. Uh, so you can see, Rick, would you like premium help? No, all right, try premium for a month. Okay, it's at the bottom. They've, they, they move things around. Explore all plans, it was underneath my stuff. You can see there's four plans, by the way, here. The basic one is th this, which you do get, you can see it says learn new skills, and that's LinkedIn Learning. And you can see it's $29.99 a month. Take advantage of your free month. You only get one free month, and it's per email address, uh, but you've got one email address. Uh, you guys don't want to be bothering with these things, but that, you know, you only get the, the $30 a month if you pay for a year. That's 300 and what, $360. That's a lot. Um, th by the way, the, uh, the recruiters start at $100 a month and it goes up precipitously. That's, that's by the way, for uh, the, uh, the um, recruiter light, so to speak. But as you can see, you get, you get access to LinkedIn Learning. And LinkedIn Learning is enormously valuable because it's a, it's a uh, focus on skills. LinkedIn Learning has over 10,000 courses available. Some of them are short and sweet. Uh, some of them are you know, several hours in length. Uh, I have a lot of my clients who might be interested in project management who go out and, and take advantage of LinkedIn Learning to get prepared to take the PMP exam. Uh, or CPA exam, or uh, you name it. There's all kinds of great stuff. Anything from learning a programming language to starting your own business to how to, uh, how to do better on Word or Excel, any of that stuff is available to you through LinkedIn Learning. Uh, but I don't generally recommend uh, uh, doing premium if you're a student on a tight budget because I think your money can be spent better elsewhere. If you do have a job or a parent with deep pockets, then by all means, go ahead and do the premium. Um, and if you do do premium and want to do a lot of searches, because LinkedIn limits the number of searches you can do each month, then you can graduate up to the business professional one, which as you see, costs about $48 a month. So 500 instead of uh, uh, 360. So uh, again, don't necessarily recommend it for all. You'll notice I am not a premium user. Part of what my life's mission is, is to figure out how to do all the cool things uh, without taking advantage of paying uh, premium money to LinkedIn, but that's just me. Great, okay, I, thank you. Yeah, we're one minute be, away. Yeah, I wanna be mindful of time for people. Um, I thank do you, too. Rick. I'm this willing, so yeah, I'm willing to stick around if anybody, if anybody okay. does have questions, I'll that's stick around. Great.
Thank you everybody for attending. I just want to let you know a couple other um, webinars we have coming up. Tomorrow, Career Engagement Office is um, doing an employer panel, um, kind of the employer perspective and advice from employers on the current situation. Um, next week on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, we're doing a alumni career conversations. We've got three alumni who graduated back in 2009 during the last economic downturn, and they're going to give you some insight and advice on how they navigated that and what they did to kind of overcome those challenges. And then the following week on May 19th, we're going to do a webinar on how to successfully um, navigate and tackle the virtual interviewing <laughs> thing that piece that's so popular right now, obviously. So um, lots of events coming up. We're here to help and support you. All of those are listed in Handshake under events. And then we'll also be sending out emails about them. Um, as always, uh, the Albers Placement Center and Career Engagement Office are here to help you in one-on-one -on -one appointments. If you want help with your LinkedIn profile or want to kind of follow up to our presentation today, we're happy to do that. Um, so thank you so much again for attending. Again, this has been recorded. So if you want the recording of it, please reach out. We're happy to provide it. Thank you again so much, Rick. We really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. My pleasure, Megan. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. And we'll stay on for a few minutes if you want to ask some more questions.